that last camera, we're going to put on that corner over on that other side. That's what kept capture the, uh, the front of the shed. Well, Mike got the piece on, so David is down. Huh? He's going to, he found spots where I was not going to put your camera there. No, it's where not. Every it's camera in. Then I wasn't going to put them there. I but he got you where? Where it needs to be. Where? See what I'm talking about? The SWAT team when the, the Navy SEALs went and baited the high for these, these cameras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go and come back. We're mm -hmm. going we're gonna to go and come back. We're going to use my car to go get the ladder. Mm -hmm. You okay? All right, Nick. So I'm gonna put it. Put it right in the middle, man. I'm gonna put it right here. here. It's gonna get you right here, Mike. That's fine. It ain't going nowhere. Oh. Router, you got the password for the T-Mobile router? I got it. Let me get it. Yeah. Oh. Is it definitely wired in I hope it works. That's what Nina, you need your help. No, that's not. No, I might get it. Okay, but you were you recruited him. I, I did not recruit Mike. You took, you took her. Well, I took her, but that's okay. He's gonna compensate me with a meal later on. Okay, Mike. Okay. Uh, you want me to call it out to you? No, I want you to write it down. Hmm. I got it already written down. Yeah, okay. Turn to the page. I'm gonna hook it up. Huh? Turn to the page. I'm gonna hook it up. So, didn't, didn't take him no time to take his battery off and battery off of what? Pop his plug. Oh. Yeah, take the windshield wipers off, the whole uh, All right, let's test this out, see what this looks like. Mark, that's flawless. Here, I'm going to ratchet it up a little bit. Say it again. I'm going to ratchet, ratchet it up a little bit. I'm going to speed it up. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Right now, let's slow it down. It's not perfect, but it's not hitting your. Correct. So now, let's. Well, it's not raining, so it's not going to move anymore. But now, see, when I turn it off, it's supposed to rest just like that. Right. So now I'm going to just ratchet it up once and see. And then off. They're fixed. You did it, Mark. Got time to look. She over there. I just knew you was in a little bind. Yeah, right. Just to go Play the cover. That's how he learned. That's how he keeps up with the haircuts because he's been. Cause he's, he's still cutting hair. He cuts hair. Cut his hair. All, he been cutting his hair. But I don't know about now since he had surgery. I know he had to get somebody to cut it now. A few weeks ago, someone took something from the premises of my auntie that did not belong to them. We do not know who it was or when it occurred, but my auntie wanted to put a security system in place. And as you heard from my brother's wife, he recruited me to take care of this on the basis of my industrious organizational technological and administrative skills. And so I had some experience with surveillance systems going back many years, but also recently. This is the second auntie in about six months that had me put up a security system. I put one up last year and that was a good installation. And so I went to task on this one and when you're setting up these modern wireless security systems, there is a couple of things you have to keep in mind. One is 
all the cameras typically coordinate through a synchronization module. This module is the piece that all the cameras talk to in order to get out to the internet and upload the security footage to the cloud. So it is very important that this module attaches to the Wi-Fi router and that the synchronization module is up to date. So those were the first two things I needed to do. And then once the synchronization module was set up properly, and it did take a bit of time because cellular based Wi-Fi can be somewhat difficult for many devices and it's not insurmountable. I was able to get, get it connected eventually. But if it's a cellular based Wi-Fi router, that's something to take into account. Then you take each camera and you either charge them up or you put batteries in them or both. It depends on if they're rechargeable batteries and how much those batteries have, de have been depleted, how much they discharged while they were packed. So I got all the cameras unpacked. I got them synchronized to the main sync module. That sync module was connected to the Wi-Fi router and it was time to put the cameras into operation. The approach that I take here is what I call camera crossfire. I set up a crossfire zone. It's a term I've made up, but I'm sure, I am, I am very sure that there's a U.S. military equivalent term. I don't know what that term is, but I call it crossfire, camera crossfire. And by setting up a camera crossfire, you ensure that there is maximum coverage across your surveillance setup with no dead zones. My goal was to have zero blind spots or dead zones where any movement or activity that does happen is logged and tracked and traced. So that's what I wanted to establish here is a crossfire on the front porch where the opposing cameras are basically intersecting their line of sight at a certain point that ensures 180 degrees of coverage. And in this case, I did it so well that from the very tip of the front yard to the left, to the very tip of the front yard to the right and everything in between is covered in such totality that not even a cat or a squirrel would escape notice. Thank you. 
And uh, my car before it, um, the engine failed, mm -hmm. and so I got that fixed. But then a year later, the transmission starts going out. Oh my goodness! Higher, just up a little higher. Perfect, just perfect. And, um, I've had to do some maintenance on this one, but not as much as uh, the, the, the last car. So. I bought it. I bought it new. I bought that new when I was in the country. 2016. You know how many miles I got on? 30. Not even 10. 11,000. About 11,200 miles. And Josh, he, he drove it to uh, Baltimore, Maryland a couple of times. When I left here, he yep. go stay with Sean. That's right. And uh, move it. Uh, let's see. Move it slightly to your left. Just slightly to your left. Nope, the other way. To your right. Move it slightly to your right. Okay? Now, it's up too high. Have it, have it facing down as far down as you can. And stop. That's perfect. Okay. Let me uh, show, show net. So now you got right now you got three points of coverage. So no matter how, so no matter how anybody approaches here, you got all of it. Hey, you got the garbage can. Here, let me show you the preview. Let's run it again. That's that's more camera than I realized. Oh, yeah. you, now that he's not up there, look. You got the oh, whole thing back oh, there now. And can you see? Yeah, I'm gonna grab my Okay. Oh, you got you got your, you got the backyard part of that. You want one, Nick? Yeah. Dang. No, not right now. I got to see what y'all doing. You hooked up. While it is true. And it is abundantly true that I am not a fan of surveillance. That doesn't stop me from using surveillance if it is available. You can philosophically disagree with the concept of surveillance, especially how it's used in these modern times. But if the tool is available and it is of practical use, then there are good occasions where you can find a valuable use of this tool. And I couldn't be more pleased to have a solution that is both peaceful and safe that would ensure the safety of those close to me. And so that's what this is all about. And these are the insights that I have on setting up surveillance using a crossfire methodology 
where there is complete coverage at every angle so that if there is something that occurs, there is a good documentation and record of that incident. If you have any questions or you need recommendations on security and system setup, go ahead and ask the questions in the comments. And if you thought this was useful information, feel free to like the video and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.